please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. We look forward to sharing new insights, content, and commentary on these critical emerging issues further in 2021. Please stay tuned. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining today's seminar. Today, we will be discussing Japan's 2021 political calendar. I'm pleased to announce uh, our speakers and welcome you today. I am going to be your host just for this uh, beginning portion. My name is Kelly Langley. I am a director at Langley Esquire. Just to get started, I would like to introduce both of our speakers today. We are very grateful to be joined by two esteemed guests. Uh, Dan Harada is a very uh, well-known uh, figure within the halls of the Diet. He is an active member of the Liberal Democratic Party, and in fact, one of the only Caucasian uh, members among the million or several million uh, Jimin Party members. Uh, he established the Nagatacho Forum in 1987 and uh, graduated from the MBA uh, with an MBA from the Ecole de Commerce, uh, as well as going to Wall Street thereafter. He became a naturalized Japanese citizen in 1987. Dan, if you would like to uh, add anything here, please go ahead and uh, introduce yourself as well as your firm. Well, I first of all would like to thank Langley Esquire and everybody here to make it possible. Uh, I think you, you have described me so accurately that there's little else that I can uh, add. Let's say that I am every day on the diet, in the diet and meeting people and working with clients and working with uh, members of the diet. And I've been doing this for quite a number of years. And uh, I can, can <coughs> plan to continue to do it for quite a number of years to come. I have basically two uh, activities. One is to be a political commentator, a bit like what I'm doing now for your friends. And the other one is uh, make, giving access to diet members and politicians to foreign companies, or actually even Japanese companies operating uh, in Japan. Thank you, Dan. Next, I'd like to introduce our other speaker, Mr. Timothy Langley. He is the founder of Langley Esquire, uh, also the chairman of Tell Japan, uh, the Tokyo English Lifeline. His claim to fame is, you know, 40 years of experience in, in public affairs in Japan, as well as former experience uh, as general counsel and director of public affairs for both Apple Computer and General Motors Asia Pacific. He was the first foreign national to become policy secretary in the Japanese diet under former foreign minister Taro Nakayama, as well as former Far East trade and investment representative for the US Commonwealth of Kentucky, and currently sits on the board and advises various other companies. Timothy, if you would like to add anything to your introduction, please go ahead and do so, as well as introducing Langley Esquire. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kelly. And uh, once again, uh, Dan Harada, thank you very much for joining us as uh, many already know, but if you're signing on from uh, someplace else other than Japan, you might not know Dan Harada has been a uh, political um, uh, consultant and uh, advisor for as long as I've known you, Dan, maybe uh, 30, 35 years. Um, and Nagata Cho Forum is a go-to uh, source for political insight on what's going on inside the diet. Dan is the only, um, well, he's naturalized as Japanese, but he's the only, uh, kind of guy that looks like him uh, inside the uh, Liberal Democratic Party. So his, his uh, insight is, is very valuable to us. Langley Esquire is a public policy firm in Japan. We've been doing business and helping foreign companies, uh, embassies, Fortune 500 corporations um, deal with their interactions with the Japanese government. Um, as everyone knows, Japan is a very rule-based regulatory um, uh, organized uh, economy. And so the interaction between uh, companies, in fact, individuals too, and the Japanese government is, is very rich and, and highly textured. And for many foreign capital companies, they just need a, a little bit of a, a leg up. They, the learning curve is so steep. So that is the, uh, the role that we play 
in um, contributing to the, the public sphere of uh, public policy, government affairs, and um, crisis management, uh, corporate um, issues that, that arise on a, on a frequent basis, uh, particularly among uh, foreign capital companies. So that's Langley Esquire. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Timothy. So just rounding out uh, our introduction before we pass off the floor to the speakers, I just want to uh, do a, a bit of a housekeeping. So please be aware that this webinar is being recorded. We do have a Q&A portion at the end of the webinar. So please feel free to insert your comments within the chat. Also uh, adding questions uh, within the Q&A function. It should be at the bottom of your screen. Uh, we, we hope to uh, deliver, you know, an engagement, an engaging webinar. Um, so we will be going through a bit of the background and overview of the diet, its makeup, and we'll be going into some of the specifics of the political calendar this year and diving into some of the specifics with our two guest speakers. And with that, I would like to pass it off to our speakers. So Timothy and Dan, the floor is yours. Great. Thank you very much, Kelly. So the, um, main thrust of this webinar is to talk about uh, Japanese politics, what is happening now, what's important, what you need to watch out for. And um, for those of you who are interested, who live in Tokyo, Dan does a regular uh, breakfast briefing once a month. Uh, reach out to him if you are interested in getting involved or getting better educated in uh, what's going on. What you have in front of you is a slide of uh, significant events that we already know that are pretty much on the calendar. Um, and the most important part here, if you're a Japanese politician, is elections. How am I going to get reelected or how am I going to get elected if there is a, an opportunity? Uh, when is the prime minister going to call for elections or is he going to wait until the final moment, which is in October, where constitutionally he must have uh, an election? But these are kind of laid out in a timeline here. Um, the diet just opened a couple of days ago, Dan, and um, we're kind of kicking off this whole calendar. Can you take a look at this, um, this timeline that we have here and add uh, any insight or uh, interesting um, you know, comments on what we have in front of us? Yes, Timothy, there's one. Uh, I am not that certain that we're actually going to have the Olympics on uh, July 23rd to August 8th. And I think the chances are diminishing by the day. Yeah. But otherwise, I completely agree with uh, with what is uh, uh, the timeline that you have here. So one of the um, important parts of trying to figure out what's going on in Nagata Cho is the elections. Elections are so big, they kind of freeze everything. Uh, when there is an election, it, the election campaign goes on for about two weeks, and then things get re-triggered uh, and, and start again. So we know that there must be an election for the House of Representatives at the, at the end of October, but there could be another time, and it's been talked about widely, even in the Abe administration, when can, we, when can the prime minister call the election? He has the ability to do that at a time that is most beneficial to him so that the LDP potentially increases its numbers, two or three uh, or four uh, additional seats, that's a big deal. Yes, uh, there are several uh, elections ahead of us. Uh, one is on the board at the August, uh, April 25th. And I will comment on that later on and explain why we have an election. And then there is one which is not on the board, but it is the election to the Tokyo Municipal Assembly uh, sometime in July. And after that, everything that's uh, here is correct. There will be an election to the president of Jiminto at the end of September, if not sooner. Mm -hmm. And then there has to be an election, national election to the main house before the, 10, the 21st of October. So <clears throat> the LDP is the party that's in power. It wants to stay in power. And there are some finessing 
that they can do. For example, the prime minister can call an election at a time that's most opportune for him. So you can tell that even in the Abe administration, he was waiting for a tailwind, for some sort of success, something to happen that would boost his profile and his popularity, and then call an election. There are big gaps here where you can't call an election. There's only a couple that really come to mind. April 21st is potentially one, but the potential election that is there um, is there, there are a couple of by-elections, for example, in Hokkaido or in Hiroshima, the, the, the members have changed. The government could, or the prime minister could use that as an opportunity to, to call a snap election. Could you comment on that? Yeah, what, you, what you're saying is perfectly correct. Or at least it was uh, correct maybe one or two weeks ago. It is de decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. A number of reasons. One is the decreasing popularity of our prime minister. Uh, many of the polls now put him in the 30% area, which is not a good climate to have a general election. Mm -hmm. uh, there is the 20th, uh, 25th of, of April, there will be some by-elections, but your question was, will be be combined with the national election? My guess is no at this point. Every uh, day is every day is interesting. Um, from day to day, the prime minister opened uh, the, the, uh, the diet and immediately things are changing. Um, he, just in a matter of days. And uh, you commented on his popularity. Once he's now in front of the microphone and people can observe him, he's quite different. And his, his portrayal is quite different than when he was the, um, uh, the administrator of the, the prime minister's office. Well, what you said is absolutely correct. Uh, I was in the, in the house when the <coughs> two days of budgetary a meeting. Uh, when you compare it to uh, Abesan, it is quite a different person. And as you just said, when you compare it to when he was, I don't know what you call this, uh, Kambuchoka, he uh, is completely different. Right. He is not coming well in when, he, when he's being quizzed. He has most of the time a piece of paper in front of him. And one could expect the prime minister to be more forthcoming and yes. be able to speak without notes. <clears throat> um, my my in impression or interpretation is that he is uh, the the office of prime minister is very weighty, and you don't want to say things that um, are going to get you into trouble. So you stick very close to the line, and he reads what his his office has given to him. That's my impression that he's reading from the script and he doesn't, he just doesn't come across as, as fluid and credible, but he looks just a little bit scared. Well, I couldn't agree more. I, I've spent maybe a total of, of seven hours in two days in, in the hearings. And uh, what you said is correct. I mean, he's a completely different person from when he was in his uh, previous configuration, but it, it does not improve its image in the eyes of the public. Yeah. He is the prime minister. He is also um, uh, the, the spokes, spokesperson for the Liberal Democratic Party. Can we go to the next slide, please? <clears throat> and the um, House of Representatives, it's a bicameral legislature, legislator, legislat um, legislative house. There's the upper house and the lower house. I know you don't like to put it as upper house and lower house because in fact, the lower house, the House of Representatives is um, really the, the, the powerhouse of the two. But when we're take, talk, taking a look at just the House of Representatives and the distribution of uh, opposition and LDP, it is frequently said that um, the Liberal Democratic Party needs to maintain uh, three quarters to pass certain le legislation, I'm sorry, two thirds in order to pass certain legislation that was important under Mr. Abe. Can we talk about that? Can we talk about the LDP and the coalition with uh, Cometo? Well, the coalition with Cometo goes back now uh, 20 years and uh, it works this way. The uh, Dimint, uh, LDP or Diminto 
to a certain extent needs the, the help of Cometo from an election standpoint, in return for which uh, Diminto, uh, Diminto, I see, LDP is Diminto. Diminto invites some members of Cometo to sit in the cabinet and be aware of what is really going on in the government. The election to this year's election is going to be run under the same system. They help us with the voters. We help them with power. Mm -hmm. And if you just take a look at this graph, it doesn't, it looks like it might be two thirds. It could be a, a little bit more, a little bit less. But in the lower house, in the House of Representatives, it is two thirds with the Cometo coalition, correct? Yes, correct. And the two thirds which you uh, referred to uh, has to do with changing the constitution. To change the constitution, there are two steps. The first one is to go through the diet, two thirds of each of the two houses. And then we go on to the public in a referendum where only 50.00.1% is required. Mm -hmm. That is the two thirds. And this two thirds is maintained in both houses currently? Uh, yes, it's a razor, razor thin in the, uh, in the house of uh, councillor or whatever you, you call it, but uh, it, it may change. It may change it, after the next election. That's right, and, and that's why these elections are so important and why the posture of the prime minister and what he says and the number of scandals is so important. So let's talk about Mr. Suga right now. He is kind of a holdover from the Abe administration, which is why his tenure is so short. It is dictated by his, the remaining term in the Abe administration. Can we talk about Mr. Suga for a bit? Yes, you're, you're right. I mean, he uh, has to, his term ex <coughs> expires on the same day that Mr. Abe's Sam's terms would have ended. So he essentially has only one year to mm -hmm. show his color and prove what he can do. Now, he may run for election again. He may not run for election again. At this point in time, we'll be only at the end of January. It's much too early to draw a conclusion. So the um, LDP is like a big tent that is comprised of several different groups. And the, the factional role in Japanese politics is something that's talked about all the time. It is like um, several different political teams or groups, but they all are coalesced under some sort of maybe philosophy um, can we talk a little bit about the factions? Because it's an, an important aspect of understanding how power is distributed. Yeah, you just use the word team. And I, I agree very much with that. I compare it to Team McLaren, Team Ferrari, when all the mechanics and so on strive for one thing to make sure that the, dri the guy who drives the car uh, is, is, comes, comes out on top. The factions have nothing to do with ideology or anything like that. They are all members of, of Jiminto, so they have the same uh, philosophy. It's really a, a, a group whose main interest is to elect the prime minister. And if you look at the recent election when, when Sugasan uh, got the nod, the, at the beginning, uh, it was not exactly certain which way it will go. But uh, when Aso-san decided that his team was going to go Suga, and then when Abe-san decided that his team wouldn't go Suga, then it was done. And all the, the other groups of teams didn't have much to do. So if you, that is the, the purpose of a faction. The, the rest is, is neglig negligible. I think this this election of Mr. Uh, Suga highlights the, the role of, of these teams because that decision that you just talked about, the transition from Mr. Abe to somebody else, 
that decision for it to be Mr. Suga happened in less than 48 hours, didn't it? Exactly. And it happened because of the role of uh, Nikai, Mr. Nikai-san, who is, uh, in fact, the number two in the party, the number one being Prime Minister Suga, and the second one is Secretary General Nikai. And he engineered the thing very swiftly, and in fact, so swiftly that the others didn't have time to even react and understand what was going on. Okay, okay. so just uh, as a, a background for the thousands of people who are watching this, this webinar with us, this, um, the, the teams that occupy the LDP, that power is redistributed once there's a change in government or the election of the prime minister. And that's what we have in front of us here. Mr. Nikai was the key person in forming the Suga administration. And so as a result, he's able to pick his own people for the, the most crucial roles from where future prime ministers almost always come. Can we talk about this LDP leadership right here? Yes, uh, one thing which is uh, striking when you look at the leadership now is that one uh, leader of one team, a former, a prime, a former foreign minister, Kishida-san, who was defeated in the election, was completely kicked out of the party leadership. The other, the other team, which is not on the party leadership, is uh, Ishiba-san Ishiba because his faction is too small and because he was on all the time, a, I would not say enemy, but certainly an adversary of uh, Abe-san. So, and if you look again at the team, it's well balanced, except for the two that I mentioned now, but if you look even with a smaller uh, lens, uh, it is very much tilted towards the Nikai team. Yes, it is. Um, Nikai has um, survived uh, 12 elections. You have the elections here. That is huge. He is such a powerhouse. Um, you see him on television all the time. Um, people might not recognize him. People who are on this, uh, this webinar might not recognize him, but his weight is, is uh, so significant. Oh, clearly. And, and it was, it, for instance, he has been the longest serving Secretary General, even longer than the former uh, leader, uh, Mr. Tanaka, former Prime Mr. Tanaka. So clearly, and when you said he was elected 12 times, it's correct. And it's almost there are only two or three other uh, Jimin members in the Diet who have been elected more than 12. So right now he is, he has an interesting role because he made Mr. Suga, as I said earlier. But there are some people who said that maybe if he would stop to support Mr. Suga for whatever reason, Mr. Suga might very well fall. Sure. So Nikai-san is clearly the, the driver in the whole uh, Jiminto organization now. To, to, to shed a little bit of insight to our viewers, um, we have an election for prime minister coming up within the next um, nine months. Yes. Clearly, the candidate for prime minister, whether it, Mr. Suga decides to run or not, is probably on this list right here. Wouldn't you agree? Not all of them, but uh, no, no, I would, no, I would not agree. Uh, well, maybe this is one exception. It's completely out of what what I'm going to say, but it could be that Noda Seiko san might be a call upon to serve to, to rescue the party. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, the, the others are not. Nika Sans will certainly not be, and the others are, are not. Uh, Ashimomura san could possibly, if he got the green light from Abe san, but that is not certain. Right. Well, he comes from the largest um, team, the largest political faction within the LDP, so that would make a certain amount of sense, wouldn't it? 
Yes, it would, but uh, he, within the team, the uh, Osoda team, the former Abe uh, Sun team, uh, he is the most likely candidate, but there are other two or three yes. who would be quite willing to run against him or run period. Okay, let's let's move on quickly. We've got uh, the the diet opened on the 18th. Today is the 27th. Uh, it's been going on for a little bit more than than a week. Uh, you've been there every day. You are always at, in the diet, walking the halls and talking to people, Dan. Um, there are a couple of issues that are uh, confronting the prime minister. Could you cover uh, what what the your insight is right now? There there was some significant movement yesterday with regard to. Uh, the um, the budget with uh, I'm sorry the the laws for uh, COVID uh, reaction and um, for the budget could you talk a little bit about what's going on today what's going on this week the reason is I mean that is the budget the third supplementary budget of fiscal twenty and this will be approved tomorrow, on the mm -hmm. 28th. Uh, what you're referring to is the COVID-related law. Uh, it was actually not supposed to be discussed yesterday, but it just happened to be discussed in the budget hearings. But it was also discussed behind the scenes between the opposition and us. And there are essentially two uh, set of laws. One is to impose penalty and to impose uh, thanks to the people who would follow the government orders to close the bar at let's say eight o'clock or to close the business at the, no matter when, but penalty for those who do not follow the orders and then penalty and uh, gratification for those who do. And the second uh, set of laws is what to do what penalty can the government impose on the people who have been detected to be affected by COVID and who refuse to go to the hospital? And at some point, uh, not before yesterday, the Diminto with the government said that imposed <coughs> jail, jail penalty, jail for refusing to go to the hospital, or if you actually went into the hospital, get out of the hospital, <laughs> flee from the hospital. Now that has been dropped. So they will not be a, a prison terms, but they will be a <coughs> kind of financial terms. So these are the two sets of laws. Uh, they will come to debate, a formal debate. But what happened yesterday was not formal, it was informal. When the budget clears a day, a day, a, tomorrow, and beginning on Monday, then the two laws will be officially brought to the Diet and be debated. And they will, since both sides of the aisle have already agreed on the terms of, of the laws, they, they, the, the fact that they get through is all, it's absolutely guaranteed. And, and that early February. So that's the calendar in uh, recent uh, days. Thank you very much. Um, as we were talking about earlier, uh, Mr. Suga opened the 150-day uh, diet session uh, uh, last week. Um, there were a lot of cat calls coming up from his, uh, his uh, colleagues in the pit. Um, and that has kind of increased over uh, the last couple of days. He's really in the hot seat now. And um, there's still some some baggage that he's carrying over from the Abe administration. Can we talk a little bit about his policy speech, where he intends to put his emphasis, and then I'd like to move very quickly into what kind of issues he might be confronting. Well, the policy speech was uh, like all of those policy speech, uh, not, not, the very ex not very dramatic. He said mo most of the things that everybody expected him to say. The, uh, he is caught in, in a bind, and, uh, and I'm going to say is what I'm going to say now is not the policy speech, but came out uh, yesterday. His favorite policy is the so-called go to to stimulate the local economies that people go and travel. 
And in the supplementary budget that was debated yesterday, there is an amount which is earmarked for go to. But the only problem and, and the only thing is that go to is now suspended and go to may not come alive again after then if we extend beyond February, February 4th, there's another call for restraint, then the, she, the opposition quizzed him in saying, well, what's happened to the money? <laughs> So, uh, and, and the answer was, well, uh, we, we keep it there in case we do it again or not. So uh, that was the, the really his baby is the uh, go to. And the other one uh, is the digitalization. And that is going to have several laws which will be brought to the diet sometimes uh, after the budget has passed. The budget for 21 not the one that goes through tomorrow. Right. And uh, it will be, uh, it's certainly a, a development that will affect the life of every single Japanese. And uh, maybe if ever the, the laws were passed within this session, maybe it would be a trigger for Mr. Suga to wave a flag and say, this is what I did and then use that to call uh, for an election. Okay, so right now, putting your, yourself in the prime minister's shoes, the last thing he wants is some sort of political turmoil or some kind of scandal that comes up. Next slide, please. And uh, he has one uh, uninvited right now, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Uh, the lady who, appears to the, on the screen was found by, by the court was found guilty for of bribery to get elected if the ruling is not overturned by a higher court she will be stripped of her title as member of the diet or she might even resign from her own volition now, if she does, uh, what, whichever case is, there will be a by-election in Hiroshima where she was elected from. And this is what you had earlier on the map for the months to come, the April 25th election. So uh, the next thing is a husband was, let's call it a co-defendant in the trial. Now, her trial is over. His trial is not over yet. Uh, but because she has been found guilty, it's most likely that he will be found guilty as well of the very same crime, except that he spends and bribes about 20 times as much money as she did. So we have this, uh, this scandal. And Suga-san went twice to Hiroshima to campaign on, uh, went twice, and they use her now. He went twice to campaign on her behalf. So clearly there are people in the opposition that could raise the question at some point in the future budget deliberations. Yes, there was um, um, uh, not an enormous, but yes, a sizely amount of money that was distributed. And the question is, where did that money come from and uh, all indicators are that it came from the LDP uh, to help LDP candidates in the elections that um, her husband and she were uh, involved in. So the implications for the current prime minister are you are the leader of the LDP, you are the prime minister now, um, your reputation is not strong enough for us to carry through for the LDP to be, you know, two thirds of a majority in both houses, so we need to move on. Well, it, it may it may happen. Okay, we, we got two. One more thing is is more important than this scandal is the COVID laws and so on. Yes. And strangely enough, in the th in two days of, of deliberation on the on the budget bill, that did not come up. So, yeah, that did okay. not. So, so next maybe 
who knows? But it's not a, if it comes out, it is not a plus for him. Yes, that's right. Um, but but you're absolutely right. The the entire population, if you watch the news in the morning, it is all about COVID. In between um, commercials and uh, news about buying sandwiches and eating ramen, um, it's it's almost uh, completely dominated by uh, COVID and the government's reaction to it. We have um, several elections. When when you see this kind of billboard uh, coming up in the neighborhoods, you know election is is uh, imminent. Yes, uh, as I said, you know, we we have April twenty fifth. Uh, if she is stripped, there will be three elections on that day. One in, in her district, another one, somebody who, a member of a diet who died of COVID, and another one which is related to another scandal where Nikai, Nikai San uh, is very closely involved. Okay, we, we will have these three elections. And, and uh, thereafter question mark as to when the general election. Right, that third one is in Hokkaido. I think the the indicators are so poor that even uh, the LDP has decided not to run a, a candidate there. But the point here is that on April 25th, there will be a, a series of, of by-elections and that might be the opportunity to close down the house and call for an election. But all indicators now are that it's not looking good. Um, there's nothing really good on the horizon that we can uh, attribute to uh, Suga leadership or to the LDP. So it looks like that timing will come and go. Is that accurate? Yes, yes. Yeah. As I said, two, two weeks ago, there were some thoughts about the national election being held the same day as the by-election, but that possibility is decreasing and as I, I would say has almost become zero now as of now. There's also another possibility which has been mentioned is that the national election will be held on the same day in July when the Tokyo municipal election uh, is due to take place. I don't think that is too realistic either. I think we should look at an election near the end of the term. Yes, so the uh, Tokyo Metropolitan um, Government and the administrator and uh, Ms. Koike, the governor, has uh, actually told the national government, please, you know, back off, let us have our election, don't confuse it with your election too, uh, leave us alone to have our election, then move in towards uh, hopefully the Olympics, and then you can have your, your party. Yes, yeah. yeah. Can we go to the next slide, please? I want to move on more briskly, Dan, because uh, I want to preserve as much time for Q&A. We've got Q&A that are coming in. Um, COVID-19, the special measures, measures law and the uh, application of that um, discussed yesterday as we talked about. Let's just go ahead and pass through this one, Kelly, if you don't mind. The next one is the digital agency that we didn't spend much time talking about. Uh, the digital agency is there are six laws of the perhaps, or seven laws of the perhaps 63 that are on the, the calendar. We don't know if we'll get through all of them, but these seven for the digital agency pretty much are, are good to go. They will launch the digital agency in October. So a lot of preparation, uh, supplement, uh, the budget for establishing a brand new uh, agency is already in process. Uh, let's talk about the huge impact of uh, a digital agency, Dan? There, there will, could be a problem. You mentioned that there's, uh, there are seven laws that is correct. One is the basic law that authorizes the establishment of the ministry. But the other six ones are going to be probably run into some problems because uh, it is the, it's linked to the my number card which in America would be called a social security card. And if you look at what the law would say, it, people might say that the government is infringing on the individual right of people, like looking into their bank accounts and so on. So the digital uh, agency will get off the ground 
but maybe not all six ancillary laws will go that smoothly. Yes, the, I think the, um, the important thing for the digital agency, the hope and the drive for that is that all of the various ministries have their own internet, their own email, their own uh, confined technology within the ministry. It's not shared. They have this, this kind of uh, encasement and the digital agency is designed to remove that so that perhaps the prime minister or the prime minister's office or some central area has a broad spectrum, actually big data for understanding the, do, uh, the, the government, the administration and that sort of thing. Yeah, what you're saying is completely correct. Now there are two things, one establishing the agency. So before the end of September or what? And then what happens later because the ministries were many health ministry or foreign ministry who has its own a digital network may not follow the orders of a digital agency. When the digital say, turn over your system to us and they might say no. So establishing the law, of it, establishing the agency is simple, but making it wor works is maybe a different story. Yes, uh, the, the leadership that was selected is um, beginning to come into to, to form. Hidai Sensei is has been tapped as the, the minister. He's a new cabinet minister. Um, I'm very hopeful. Uh, frequently, Japan is reluctant to change and then something happens, some challenge or some, uh, some big thing happens and all of a sudden in lockstep things change. And that is the, uh, the hope and the dream for this digital agency, wouldn't you agree? Yes, yes, I do indeed. Let's talk about energy and quickly go into uh, the Q&A or maybe the budget for uh, before we get into the Q&A. Uh, energy is a, a big issue, sustainability. The prime minister has made uh, some comments with a reflection on renewables. Uh, the new uh, Biden administration has made their pronouncements too. Can we talk a little bit about energy before we move on, Dan? Well, as uh, I'm looking at the we're talking about 2050, it's a pretty long uh, horizon. So what you've said is correct. Uh, President Biden is, is rejoining Paris. Uh, we should have all electric vehicles by 35 and so on. But this is into the future and Suga-san will definitely not be prime minister at the time these things could have happened to go into business. So that's this long-term thing and a little too far ahead of us. Okay, let's move on. Uh, the budget, this is huge. Uh, we've got the, sup the third supplementary budget and the 2021 budget. So the third supplementary budget is being considered and, and will be passed now. And then 2021 budget, that needs to be passed before uh, April 1st. Yes, so the, the third, third supplementary budget goes into effect tomorrow. Then the, we move, in, then yes. we move into uh, the 21 uh, budget. Uh, there's a lot of writing on this page and, and I apologize to our, our viewers, um, but the, the numbers are so important how large these numbers are, what the government is dedicating to, uh, to various responses. If you take a look to the, um, the bottom, total additional spending for the supplementary budget, Dan, that, is, that number is just astounding. Yeah, that's 20 trillion. Now, now this, is not, this is for the three budget combined. We have the number, number three, which will go in effect tomorrow. We had a number two last September, and we had an, uh, another one in last, uh, last June. So it's, it's not, it's, it is 20 trillion, but it's not in one shot. It's a true, the, the addition of three different budgets. For those that are interested, uh, go back twice, Kelly, please. Um, here is the URL for uh, the uh, Ministry of Finance um, details on that. There is um, there are documents in English, 
uh, if you're interested. Um, but so this is the, the government's reaction to the current crisis. Moving forward, anything to add on, on that before we go into Q&A, Dan, on the budget? No, it's uh, no, no, not, nothing really. The, the, the top line is clearly critical, the containment measures for, for COVID-19, particularly vaccination and so on. So, by the way, the, uh, the military will be called upon to play a good role in the vaccination effort. Uh, we didn't we didn't talk much about uh, the military military spending. It is it was a huge issue under the Abe administration. I imagine that will be continued. The uh, reliance on the United States for uh, that support. Uh, what's going on in Okinawa is always an issue of of great contention. You're not hearing much about it, but there still is movement going on there. Perhaps we can um, dedicate a, a different uh, webinar on that particular aspect because it is. Uh, incredibly important, uh, Article 9 uh, influence as well. Um, anything on that before we move on to Q&A, Dan, on the military? No, but you, you brought something actually interesting, is that uh, the effort to change the Constitution, Article 9, uh, there is a law which is in front of a diet that is a first step towards moving to both two-thirds house and so on. But when you, when you dissolve the house, the, the, it, all the bills which are pending are killed. So including that one that has to do with the, the mechanism for the referendum. So uh, we will have to start to be reintroducing but Suga-san, if he's still prime minister, does not have the same motivation as Abe-san did. And it might well be the, de the death of the, of the constitutional reform movement. That's my speculation. And it's a little far into the future, but it has to it, it, we get uh, done or not when we get through the uh, dissolution. There was also speculation at, at some point that uh, the former prime minister would also raise his hand again to come back for, uh, for yet another, another bite at the apple. I think that that's diminished. I, I don't want to spend much time on that. If people are interested, uh, you should uh, join Dan's uh, breakfast briefing on a monthly basis because there are, are frequent updates on that. Um, Dan, let's move into Q&A. Kelly, uh, could you um, run us through what has come through from our, our viewers and uh, let Dan take a stab at that? Sure. Um, so first, we have a question from a Mr. Eric Johnson, a senior correspondent from the Japan Times. The question is for Mr. Harada. Is there a growing possibility that Suga will resign, but that he will simply be replaced without a general election? Would Taro Kono be the likely successor, he asks. Dan, that's for you. Yeah. Uh... It, Mr. Suga may or may not, it all depends on what his ratings will be uh, be before the September election to Jiminto president. If ever uh, things have gone well, that is ratings that have gone up, things that could go well is, for instance, the vaccination turned out to be a success rather than a, a possible failure. So. Then your question, second question is, if uh, Sugasan does not run, you are quite correct in saying that uh, Kono-san could be a very likely uh, successor. That would depend on how successful the vaccination effort will unfold. Uh, Okay, so moving on, we have a, another question from Eric Lenhart of the uh, Slovakian Embassy. So he asks, since Abe looks like he recovered, do you think he would make a second comeback by the September uh, presidency race? This was uh, mentioned at the end. Maybe we can uh, perhaps build on this. 
Well, uh, it may sound a little uh, outrageous, but let's look at it this way. Abessan is de facto the leader of the largest team. And uh, why not? I know it sounds very far-fetched, but it cannot rule it out. So if you had a, it would be a fight between Kono-san and Abe-san, I, I cannot rule it out. Now circling back to the issue of the digital agency, we have a Mr. Mark Hay asking, what is the impact or opportunities associated with the government of Japan establishing their digital agency in the fall? What are the what? Sorry, what is the impact or opportunities associated with the digital agency? Well, anything, I think anything that has to do with the expansion of my number card. Whatever it means, I don't know, but there will be an opportunity for the people who move near that uh, industry and maybe couldn't grab a slice of, I don't know what, but we have to look at my number as the, as the key uh, driver for making the, the uh, digital agency work properly. And we have Mr. Gregory Melchior asking, what is the likelihood of a female prime minister? The general consensus seems to be against a female monarch. Yeah, it's correct. Uh, there's only one would-be candidate, is a uh, Nodase Kosan. But if the thing, if the situation becomes so complex around the, the end of the summer, and Sugasan is no longer around, Abe-san cannot do it, Kono-san is whatever too young, so on and so forth, uh, she may come up like a Joan of Arc. I'm having uh, breakfast, I'm having uh, lunch, uh, tea this afternoon with her and I will ask her, uh, but it's still far-fetched. Great, moving on, we have uh, Mr. James Fiorillo asking, I am hearing that an increasing number of people in Japan are saying that they will not take the COVID-19 vaccine. What are you hearing? Uh, what are your thoughts you can share on this? And is it a worry with regards to the country's ability to realize herd immunity levels? Great question. Well, if, if the government has the right of ordering a patient to go to the, to the hospital, he could very well have the right of ordering the people to take the vaccines. It's, it's not that so much far-fetched. And secondly, he asks, do politicians realize that among the world's advanced countries, Japan is rolling out its vaccine program very late? Is there no feeling or sense of shame, he asks? Well, uh, it, it, there may be one, but it's well hidden. Thank you. Then moving on, we have a question from Mr. Tom Southerton. What scenarios do you see playing out in the South China Sea, uh, including Taiwan and the Senku Senkaku Islands, uh, with current or coming power? Well, the new American administration has, has reconfirmed that uh, Senkaku was part of the territory covered by the defense agreement. So, uh, I have to take it for granted that it is. Uh, about Taiwan, uh, that does not necessarily in, in <coughs> implicate Japan as well, but because of a, uh, of a recently passed treaty, if, 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 if the, America, the Americans went to go to war with China because of Taiwan, we would probably be supposed to help them because of a treaty. So although it's not directly our territory, we might have to still go in there to help. 
Thank you, Dan. And finally, uh, apologies, there's just a limit on time. We're going to take one more question from Mr. Bartek Radzimski. He asks, with Suga prime minister likely to not have a long tenure, do you again see the short-term prime minister terms reoccurring in a pre-Abe prime minister fashion, or do you see another key figure who would be able to hold the office of prime minister for a longer term? Well, the outlook looks a little bleak for, for Mr. Suga now, but you cannot rule out that it may turn around. As I said earlier, if vaccination is a success, the, the, the digital agency can wave the flag, it's I did. It is not certain that Suga San will not be president beyond uh, September. And then if he goes beyond September, he will go on for three years, okay? So I, I don't see why necessarily we should have the musical chair which we had uh, before Mr. Abbey. Great, thank you, gentlemen. With that, I would like to allow both of you uh, a moment for closing remarks and we will get ready to close the seminar. So maybe starting with, go ahead, Tim, Dan? take it away. No, go ahead. Dan, do you have any closing remarks? Uh, yes, there, there was yesterday released a study by a newspaper, by a magazine, asking two specialists to come up with projections of a general election. And for Diminto, it's not so good. One of them, the 253, which compares to now 282, and the other one is worse, it's 233, which compares to the same number, but which is just at the majority level. So I think since we were talking about election, I think this study that came out yesterday would be interesting to our listeners. Thank you very much, Dan. Um, thank you very much for everyone participating from, from all over Japan and from uh, other places. Uh, if you are interested in research and intelligence on public policy relevant to your business, uh, please contact either uh, us at Langley Esquire or Dan Harada. Um, he runs, as I said, uh, Nagatacho Forum uh, and is available for consulting and also introductions to you know key members of, of the diet and, and the administration. Um, this kind of webinar that we provide uh, to shed insight and what's going on that's important to you is one of the things that we do as just a, our contribution to the, the social discourse. And um, we appreciate your questions. Thank you very much for the questions um, and also for joining us today. Dan Harada, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Uh -huh.